It's called overkill, the overhunting of animals that can cause a population to collapse and even go extinct. There have been many extinction events in the history of the world, including the meteor strike that ended the dinosaurs, and the extinction event that may be happening today. But let's talk about the extinctions that happened about 12,000 years ago. This chart from an online paper by Ritchie, Spooner, and Roser states, Quaternary megafauna extinctions killed more than 178 species of the world's largest mammals. Humans were a primary driver of these extinctions. The 2017 book, The Ends of the World, explains, Around 12,000 years ago, humans arrived in North America. At the same time, after millions of years of relative stability, again, even through wild shifts in climate, North America lost a staggering array of megafauna. It lost its four species of mammoths, its elephant-like gomphotheres, and its giant ground sloths, its giant armadillos, beavers the size of bears, bears that were far larger than any now living, and giant peccaries, tapirs, stag moose, capybaras, wild dogs, dwarf antelopes, brush oxen, woodland musk oxen, and mastodons. North America lost its American zebras as well as its horses, which evolved on the continent over millions of years, then suddenly went extinct around 12,000 years ago, only to be reintroduced a few thousand years later by Spanish colonists. The list goes on and on, but were humans primarily responsible for the loss of the woolly mammoths, North American horses, and other large mammals? Let's go back to the library to see how the theory got started. In 1908, a cowboy in Folsom, New Mexico, found the remains of an extinct subspecies of giant bison. Later, museum researchers discovered spear points among the bones. Not long after, spear points dating to 13,000 years ago were found near Clovis, New Mexico. What became known as Clovis points were subsequently found at dozens of sites across North America, where ancient hunters had killed game. About a dozen sites, including in Arizona, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Texas, Wyoming, and Colorado, have produced Clovis spear points in association with Columbian mammoth remains. These provide good evidence that Columbian mammoths were hunted by Clovis people. Given that Asia and North America were connected during the last ice age, and that the first Americans appeared to be big game hunters, it was easy to conclude that they had followed the mammoths and other prey out of Asia, and then south through an open corridor between two massive Canadian ice sheets. The first Americans were, and still are, often called the Clovis people, or Clovis culture, even though earlier human settlements have been found in Pennsylvania, Texas, Mexico, and Chile, dating back to between 15 and 19,000 years ago. Some scientists believe Humans hunted mammoths and mastodons to extinction. These animals usually vanished from an area after large groups of humans arrive. People probably didn't realize the mammoths were dying out until they went to hunt and had trouble finding them. The late University of Arizona paleontologist Paul Martin first proposed his overkill theory in the 1960s. Many postmodern social scientists and anthropologists were repelled by the idea that First Peoples, already dehumanized and decimated by colonialism, could be responsible for staggered global waves of extinction. But Martin made every effort to note that it would be ridiculous to hold prehistoric people responsible for running afoul of modern conservation ideals. Near the end of his life, Martin even advocated restoring our ecologically impoverished landscape by importing elephants and camels from Africa and Asia to repopulate the American West. He even wrote lyrics to a song titled, Bring Back the Elephants, in loving memory of the mammoths, and no, I'm not going to sing it. Support for the overkill theory does remain strong. This Ice Age menagerie of animals had successfully negotiated previous glacial to interglacial transitions, 
The last one, however, was very different in one key respect. Modern humans were present. From the earliest times to today, humans have hunted large mammals all around the world. But how could they have hunted such large animals with stone weapons? A hunter with a good strong arm and a spear thrower could send a spear whizzing through the air for well over 100 feet, but it was more effective to get together and drive a group of bison or horses to their doom. The approach also works for hunting reindeer. Humans can drive the animals into deep snow in winter or a wet sticky bog in spring where they'll slow down or get stuck or even drive them along a dead end path into a corral and they'll be trapped. Hunters can drive them over the edge of a cliff, as depicted by a dramatic scene in the cave in Lascaux that shows a horse plunging down a steep rock face. Or in southern Russia, where bones from many hundreds of bison skeletons have been found at the foot of a cliff below a spot where a group of ice agers had camped. Undoubtedly, ice agers hunted mammoths. Many mammoth bones have been found at places where they camped, and at some places the bones that remain are mostly from young mammoths. Could humans have driven those animals to extinction in North America? 85% of the Ice Age megafauna became extinct by the end of the last glacial, 11,500 years ago. It's significant that by that time, as global climates became warmer, Homo sapiens had colonized all major continents apart from Antarctica. Many of the megafauna, both herbivores and predators, seem to have survived through many cycles of dramatic climate change, suggesting that on each occasion they were restocked by survivors from scattered refugia where climate change had not been so drastic. The final demise of the megafauna at the end of the last glacial must be due to some other cause, and humans are the main suspects. There are inherent physiological characteristics shared by large mammals, such as relatively low reproduction rates that could make them prone to extinction under many different circumstances. On islands and landmasses that remained undiscovered by humans for thousands of years, megafauna survived the climate changes at the end of the Pleistocene, as they had many times before. Critics of the overkill theory pointed to climate change at the end of the last ice age as an alternative explanation for the extinctions, exonerating these early pioneering humans. Just because human predation may have marked certain large vertebrates for destruction in some contexts is not evidence that this happened in all contexts. For many scientists, the assumptions of overkill, extraordinary levels of prey naivete, implausible rates of slaughter, absence of kill sites, were and are unacceptable. To single out a particular predator or a set of circumstances is fun but futile. The immense size of the mammoths made them vulnerable to habitat loss. They needed vast areas to graze. Both climate change and hunting could have limited them to small pockets of safe habitat. Contrary to the idea that the megafauna died out at roughly the same time at the end of the last glacial period, we now know that some of these animals persisted in isolated refugia for several thousand years into the present interglacial period. Such extinctions are now viewed in terms of prolonged periods of decline, rather than abrupt terminations by climate change or hunting. The lack of evidence for large-scale ecological regime shifts or extinctions during earlier periods of climate change when humans were not present supports a synergistic role for humans in exacerbating the impacts of climate change and extinctions in the terminal Pleistocene events. Because neither overkill nor environmental change alone are able to explain all of the observed facts, a number of authors have suggested a combination of the two hypotheses. In which extinctions resulted from human hunting of megafaunal populations that were at the same time subject to habitat fragmentation and other stresses in response to climactic and vegetational changes. Both climate change and human hunting fragmented populations and reduced food supplies until populations collapsed below a viable and renewable size. Ironically, 
the overkill hypothesis has been at least partially responsible for reviving interest in climate change as a possible cause of near-time extinctions. The link between the present day and deeper geological time provides a vital perspective on the modern world and gives us valuable insights into wildlife conservation and the effects of climate change. Such research has enormous implications for how we value and conserve the megafauna, and indeed all animals, that we have left, and how to prevent many more extinctions of wild megafauna in the near future. In part four of this series, we'll look at one more controversial theory about how the last ice age might have ended. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books and films featured in this video.